on today's Techno Babble, what to do when it's time to replace your projector. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Tech No Babble. This is the show where every week we talk about using video and graphic design in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask your questions, leave your comments, etc. So please do that below the video. If you're listening to the audio, no problem as well. Just go ahead and head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com contact, where you can find all my contact information or leave your comment. Or you can always hit me up on email, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. So I was looking around the office trying to decide what I was going to talk about today and I stumbled across this old Ike projector that I have. Now it's a little broken and it's a little heavy. Um, so I thought, well, what would I do if I had some money to replace it? Well, I know the things I'd look for, but I'm not totally convinced that everyone that's interested would know the right things to look for. So. Let me give you a list of things that I would look for in a new projector. The first thing is brightness. If you find a great deal on a projector and the brightness is me measured in hundreds of lumens, it's not a great deal on a projector. No, uh, first off, make sure it's measured in lumens. That's the industry standard. Secondly, you need more brightness if you can get away with it. So brighter the better, um, if at all possible. I would love it if your projector was so bright that you had to put it into energy saving mode because it was too bright. That would be ideal, but uh, chances are you're not gonna run into that. So general figure, I think um, depending on the size of your uh, church, if you've got a few hundred people or coming close to a thousand, you're probably going to want to be around 10,000 lumens, give or take. But that's not the only important measurement. The other measurement that's very important is contrast ratio. Now what contrast ratio is, is the difference between the brightest white and the darkest black. So on an LCD pl uh, projector, black isn't actually black, black is more like really dark blue. And so really dark blue is not black. And so the distance between just full on white and really dark blue is gonna be less than on say a DLP projector, which uh, DLP projectors use tiny little mirrors. And the tiny little mirrors turn away from the light source when they want black so you get a much darker image when it's black. In fact you get no light when it's black. So what's really interesting is if dark is darker white light looks lighter. So if you have two projectors one is 9,000 lumens and the other is 10,000 lumens but the 9,000 lumen projector has a higher contrast ratio they might look the same in fact the 9,000 lumen projector might look brighter than the 10,000 lumen projector so just keep that in mind you might be able to save a little money with a slightly less bright projector if it has a better contrast ratio Next, resolution. This is 2015 as I'm recording this. And so, please, I do not want to hear, well, we got this great deal on an 800 by 600 projector. No, that's not a great deal. This is 2015. You're not buying your projector for today. Today, 800 by 600 is acceptable. We just uh, got done with NAB uh, maybe six weeks ago, the National Association of Broadcasters and there they were releasing new cameras. 
Almost none of them were even high definition. Most of them were 4K. So if you're thinking, well, I'm going to buy something that's going to last my church 10 years and it's 640 by 480, 800 by 600, or even 1024 by 768, that's really too low resolution. You need to be thinking 1080p probably if you want it to last this, that long. Now, if it's like a temporary thing, that's totally different. But if it's something that you're buying for the long term, think higher resolution rather than lower resolution. Next, aspect ratio. If you're buying a new projector in 2015, it has to do 16 by 9, 16 by 10, something widescreen. Uh, if it is 4x3, that's going to be a problem because everything is going high def. Everything's going high def, everything's going widescreen. I think that before too long, computers are going to be hard to find that are 4x3. Chromebooks are kind of uh, an oddity and the exception to this rule, but in general, all computers are widescreen right now. So do you want to create your graphics and have pillar boxes on either side of uh, what you're creating? No, you, what you want to do is you want to create widescreen graphics. It's just going to look better. It's what everyone's getting more and more used to with their televisions and everything. So that's really what I would uh, recommend that you go with. Next, size and portability. Now, it depends on the purpose of this projector. If this projector is supposed to be in the boardroom where the deacons meet or where the elders have their meeting, a small projector is fine. If this projector is supposed to go on mission trips with you, a small projector is preferable. If this projector is supposed to be hung up in the ceiling and not touched except when you clean out the filter and switch out the lamp, size really doesn't matter as much. Now you don't want this gargantuan that's half the size of the room, but don't say, well, this one is the size of a clock radio, and this one is the size of uh, a laser printer. I better go with the clock radio one if it's in a huge sanctuary. Now, you probably want something a little larger because it's gonna have more features for the same amount of money. Um, next, connectivity. And now for this, I'm talking about both the ability to control the projector and how you get the video signal in. Depending on how your system is set up already, finding one with a VGA connection might be a good interim step. Now, chances are in the future you're going to be SDI, you're going to be connecting over the network, uh, HD base T, something like that. Um, I really hope HDMI does not stay as a standard for projectors because it's just such a poor one. Uh, the HDMI standard, according to HDMI.org, which they recently changed this, but up until recently, it said that it supported cable runs of up to 10 meters. Now, if you Google how long 10 meters is and you're in the U.S., that's about 32, 33 feet. If your ceiling is 10 feet high, that means that you can only go maybe 20 feet forward from your computer location until you have problems. And I've heard church after church that has problems after problem that they try and get around it, but HDMI is just problematic. Now, you might be able to make it work, but since it's digital, it'll either work or it won't work. There's no kind, it kind of works. So if you have it just barely working, you won't know that it just barely works. And it could be that something slightly changes. Uh, the connector oxidizes just a hair. Something changes just a bit and it quits working. Now from your perspective it's just broken but it's not broken it just changed just a hair from just barely working to just barely not working. So that's one of the disadvantages of digital. So keep that in mind when you're looking for connections. 
what video connection do you need and what does it support? Also, connectivity for control. Uh, can you control it over the network? That's really nice to be able to fire up your web browser, turn the projector on and off. That's so much better than like searching around with the remote control. I speak from experience because I did that today for like 10 minutes, searching around with the remote control, trying to get our four projectors to turn on. And finally we got them. But in the meantime, I felt like a fool just pressing, 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 pressing. So that's something else. Next, of course, budget matters. If you find a great projector that's twice your budget, that's maybe not so much useful. If you find an awesome projector that's half your budget, that's something cool. But just keep it in mind. But don't be deceived because the next thing you need to consider is lamp replacement cost. Now there are new LED projectors and laser projectors that don't need to have the lamps replaced. They're going to be more expensive up front, but then you won't have to change the lamps. Traditional projectors, though, you will have to change the lamp, and it's not like you can buy generic lamps. It's as bad as inkjet cartridges in how much they charge for these things, so keep that in mind as well. Finally, Look at the lens because you may need a short throw lens, you may need a long throw lens, and if you buy a projector that won't take a different lens, you're out of luck. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that that was some information that can help you and your church as you're changing out your projector in the future. If you like this content, don't hesitate to head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts. G-I-F-T-S, and you can pick up a church tech gift and a free subscription to my email newsletter. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.